Let's build some lineups. Let's do it, man. All right. So the question now is where do we want to start? Deeg said he likes he likes slates where there's no value. I'm actually in agreement with you. I enjoy those type of slates too. But this one's a little weirder because there are some really good high price stacks. There isn't a lot of good value. There are some good mid-range stacks as well. So where do you think the best spot to start is? I'll let you, I started last week. What kind of build do you want to kick it off with? Well, one of my favorite games to be targeting, I already saw people bring it up in chat. And uh, part of it, I think, is because Dak Prescott is, I believe, the thumbnail of the YouTube show. But I really like the Dallas-Detroit game. I think both sides of it, either with Prescott as the QB or Goff as the QB, both of them make a whole lot of sense to me. But I say, let's start with uh, Dak Prescott and make a uh, game stack here. All right. I like it. Jose asks, can you please build a lineup with Justin Fields? Uh, yeah, we can do a we can do a Justin Fields lineup in a little bit. Let's go, Dak. We have to throw CD in here. There's really no other, there's no alternative. Uh you could go Jake Ferguson. I want Ferguson too, but to not have CD in this lineup to me seems like it might be a a, a rough idea. Yeah. Uh, you don't Dak think so? Uh, I mean, if you went like a single stack with Prescott and Ferguson, I don't think it would be terrible. But yeah, let, let's go. Uh, it is my preferred way to stack is to go uh, CD Lamb and Jake Ferguson with Dak. And Lamb is expensive. That we, Now we could go, if, if I'm doing this because Dak Prescott's not someone that, that provides a ton of rushing upside, I want another guy in there too. Now it can be Jalen Tolbert, who I think is a very nice value this week. It could be Ferguson. You could try and get weird with Cavante Turpin as well, who only ran 15 routes last week, but was targeted on five of them, 33% targets per route run. Pretty significant with Brandon Cooks on the IR. The Lions are very good at turning opponents into a one-dimensional offense. They can stop the run. The Dallas Cowboys don't have any semblance of a run game to speak of right now to begin with. So if I'm, this is me, Greg, and, I get where you're saying where you probably could go single stack, skinny stack. I like the double stack with Dak because your wide receiver two or your tight end are not breaking the bank. And that's why with, you know, a lack of value on this slate, I want to go QB plus two with Dak. Yep. Totally makes sense. Uh, overall, my favorite, just relative to price, my favorite, my favorite stacking partner with Dak it is Jake Ferguson, not because I expect him to outscore C.D. Lamb or anything, but just because this is, at least as of, as of right now, a very price-sensitive slate. So I feel like Ferguson's a little bit underpriced at 5 k whereas C.D. Lamb just kind of appropriately priced at $8,600. So like double stacks, but if you're telling me across you know 20 lineups, who's the player who should be stacking the most with Dak, I would say Jake Ferguson. Also, tight end's terrible this week. Ter terrible the entire year. Yeah. This Maybe week going forward, Kelsey's going to be, it seems like Kelsey's going to be good again now that Rashi Rice is out. But I mean, beyond that, it's just a shit position. Yeah. Because La Laporta, Laporta has been non-existent. He'll have his games, but it's not easy to project him for big games. McBride's solid, but the fact that you have Marvin Harrison Jr. there now, like a lot of these tight ends have other really good players around them where they didn't last year. Laporta did, but Jamison Williams wasn't a factor, right? So, yeah, uh, Brock Bowers is nice, but that's not a good matchup against Pittsburgh, although I don't hate him. So we got Prescott, Lamb, and Ferguson. I'm throwing I'm throwing a defense in here just to – I got to see what we can work with. And I'm going – I'm going – pan or I'm sorry. I'm going $2,400 Patriots against Houston. Okay. We don't have to. We can see what, what else is out there. Any other – any defense that project well that are cheap? Um, Tampa, Tampa's pro Tampa's the answer. The saints also, I mean, the saints are $2,700 in, uh, in that matchup against Tampa Bay have to figure they're going to slow the pace down of that game. And the defense is going to be fresh when they come out on the field. So, I mean, at $2,700 for new Orleans, I mean, I think that's a viable cheap defense. I mean, relative to us saying like the Patriots at 2,400, uh, what else is cheap? How do we how do we have the the Bucks projected so much lower with no Derek Carr? 
I would guess it's because we're expecting the Saints to run the ball more than throw, and therefore it limits the scoring opportunities for the opposing defense. Very possible. All right, Saints. You want to try Saints here, or do you want to go all – let's try Saints, 2,700. If we need to, we can go down to the Pats at 2,400 against uh, the Texans, who have no Nico Collins, and it looks like Mixon could be in danger of missing another game as well, which – which is not crazy. It seemed two weeks ago, it, reports were it, Mixon looked like he was going to be ready to play. There's reporters saying Mixon's going to be good to go this weekend. He doesn't end up playing. Then it wasn't, it was never even like a question. He was out all of last week. So it's been very weird. SMP, what's up, dude? Am I a complete psycho to like a Will Levis, Ridley, Hopkins stack against the Colts past D that gets shredded weekly with the added benefit of getting leverage? on a potentially chalky Pollard? No, I mean, it's not insane. This this indie defense is just pitiful right now, man. And they're showing no real signs of improvement. So I, I, I see where you're going. Look, I've just been betting overs on these Colts games each week because of how bad this defense is, and the offense is pretty decent. I'd like, I'd like it even more if you have Joe Flacco in there because you might see real shootout conditions in a game like this and less just running out the clock if Anthony Richardson's there. But I don't think it's insane. I don't know how well it's going to grade out, though, Greg. Uh, but just because you brought it up from the same game, I'm, Titans defense, particularly if Anthony Richardson ends up starting. I mean, Richardson, he his range of outcomes is maybe the most extreme of any quarterback in the league yeah. right now. If, if you told me that Anthony Richardson's a Pro Bowl player at the end of the year, it wouldn't surprise me. If you told me he lost his job to Joe Flacco, also wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> he makes he makes some incredible and like on both ends of the spectrum, some incredibly great and incredibly terrible plays in the same game. Uh, Titans defense at twenty eight hundred dollars. That's another cheap one that's worth considering. Absolutely, if Richardson's in, yeah, yeah, that could be a a, a minus three defensive performance or a thirty. So uh, I get it. That gives us 5,400 per player remaining. Now you see what I'm saying. The CD stack is tough, but we got to try it. Running back, I'll be honest. And, and S&P, I don't disagree that getting away from a chalky Pollard is a, is a, bad, or a good idea. But I think Pollard here at 6K is still the best value running back on the slate. And a lot of it's because he doesn't have much competition. <laughs> like who else would you go to for cheap and and feel decent right. about? You know, maybe you go back to Najee Harris if Jalen Warren's out again. Ugh, it's just but gross. Other than that, yeah, I mean Najee Harris has been rough, but you know the workload for this kind of slate it would be very dependent on Jalen Warren being out again, which we don't know for sure at this time of week. But I mean, you look at the workload the last few weeks for Najee Harris: fourteen carries, two targets. 13 carries, six targets, 18 carries, five targets. It's, it's once again, it's dependent on Jalen Warren being out. But in that scenario, on this slate, it would be hard not to consider going to Najee Harris again. Is Warren officially out? It'd be, it'd be easy for me not to go to Najee Harris. Somebody in chat said Warren is out. I didn't know if that was official. I thought he was just considered unlikely to play, he's not, not officially out. He's doubtful, yeah. I don't know. <sighs> Najee grosses me out, this guy. Like he <laughs> he's terribly inefficient. They have injuries on the offensive line. I'm not saying this Raiders defense is good because they aren't, but you had a guy, Aaron, Aaron Shamplin, the Harvard grad, who still got four attempts last week. You had Jonathan Ward, who they pulled off the practice squad, got two. Like, okay, that might not seem like a lot, but that's six attempts between those two guys. Uh, I don't know. Oh, you know, you know, it was somebody who I, I just realized that people have, have given up on, but he's also in that price range. All anybody wanted to talk about the first couple of weeks of the season was J.K. Dobbins. Nobody wants to play J. He's two just terrible games in a row. And now J.K. Dobbins, I mean, he's been as inefficient as Najee Harris. And nobody wants to play J.K. Dobbins anymore. If anybody really liked J.K. Dobbins uh, earlier in the season, I, I mean, I don't see a compelling reason you wouldn't like him now as well. Yeah, and they're coming off of a bye, which is helpful. 
The last two matchups were Pittsburgh and Kansas City, just two truly dominant run defenses. Justin Herbert was banged up badly. Now, he's still not going to be 100%, but getting that additional week of rest is huge. They also expect Joe Alt back for this one, which is another big deal, right? Like, this is a really good, a really good offensive tackle. So all of these things are, are pretty beneficial. I don't think it's crazy. I actually don't think it's nuts at all that you would go to Dobbins. And, you know, like Joe Alt, you look at his his run blocking grade, it's excellent. You know, he's he's just very, very good. So, got 6'8", 322. That's, this guy's a rookie, by the way, Greg. He's a rookie that has been, like, already really good. So, I think Dobbins, as, like, because some of – He's 6,200. I still like Pollard a little bit more, but uh, I don't think Dobbins is crazy. My guess is that, what, his ownership is very low? Yeah, it's it's around, what, 10% is where we have J.K. Dobbins, so relatively low. The other cheap running back that's worth considering to me is Alexander Madison under the assumption that Zamir White doesn't play again. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't touch, personally wouldn't, wouldn't touch him. It's 5,300. We're going to have to find cheap running backs to play somewhere. I Listen, I hear you. What I'm saying, though, is I, what I'm saying is no, I don't. Like, I would rather just fade the expensive stacks than play Alexander Madison. That's just okay. me. That's just me. This guy stinks. I mean, he stinks. And Here's Pittsburgh, the problem, though. We've already put in an expensive stack. We have to, we have to fill it out somehow. No, I hear you. But that, this is why I love doing this show, because we can, we can see – Like, we can try and put these guys in. I'm saying personally, like, right now, with the way I'm building, because we'll build, build like, a balanced lineup after this. I don't know, man. I know Madison saw 15 carries last game. Maybe maybe I'm off here. Maybe I'm off. But, ugh, against the Steelers' defense, that's tough. Either way, let, let, let us at least throw Pollard in. You can pick the second guy. All right. I I know Pollard's expensive. I still think he's the best value, like point per dollar running back. Yeah, we had, it was uh, 15 carries and three targets out of Alexander Madison. Was it say there, Jordan, that our average remaining salary is? Okay, so we're going to need a running back, I think, that's priced around that 5K range. And to me, the options, I mean, they're all fucking terrible it's we could go to like alexander madison we could go to Najee harris we could go to javante williams but like in, I, unless there's somebody i'm not thinking of i, I don't know who else we'd go to here because we can't really go up to you know like camara or Bijan robinson i think right now just because we need to get underneath that uh that average remaining salary who do we have projecting the best in that range uh let's see I mean, it's the Najee. Yeah, it's Najee. And it's a, it's a fairly low projection, 14 and a half fantasy points. All right, let's try Madison. Got Madison just over 14. Yep, which is a good projection there. I just, yeah. Maybe I'm being too critical. I'm, I'm, it's still early in the week. I'm open to change my mind, Greg. Guy hopefully, stinks. not not like hopefully, but what's going to happen is other value is going to open up because other players are going to get hurt. Not saying like, oh, hopefully players get hurt. It's just inevitable players are going to get hurt and then other value will open up. Of course. Uh, I'm honestly I'm honestly thinking about the QB plus three and playing. Man, we don't have Tolbert or Turpin projected well at all, so that's probably not going to look good for us. Yeah, the cheap wide receivers that are like in that 5K range that stand out to me. Uh, one of them is for sure Josh Downs. Um, potentially Dontavian Wicks. I, I don't I don't know for sure. Like I assume Romeo Dobbs is going to be back after whatever the hell happened last week. But if for some reason he isn't, because it does seem like he is at odds with the team, then Wicks at $5,200 would stand out. I, I know he didn't have the best fantasy game last week, but he was very involved in the offense. It just didn't equate to fantasy points. No, no, no. I liked him too. 
I like Rashad Bateman if you want to go cheap this week as well. Let's see. Bateman at 4,100. Yeah, I don't I don't hate going to Bateman. It's a he doesn't project great for us, but it's also a 52 and a half point total game between the commanders and Ravens. Like that, that just seems if you're doing these, if you're building these type of lineups, this seems like something. If we went Bateman, that gives us 5,800 remaining per player. And uh, one other guy, too, that projects pretty well for us that I think is really hard to look past, Ray Ray McLeod, his workload is yeah. pretty consistent. He's not getting, you know, throws downfield. Depth of target isn't great. But for DraftKings purposes, where we're looking at PPR and we're kind of starved for value, a guy who had nine targets last week, seven targets the week before, you know, you get another one of these games where it's like six catches for 65 yards or something. It, it's serviceable. Nico Collins to the IR. How about that? Well, they just said yesterday that he was like day to day. And well, they changed it to week to week and now it's really week to week. Yeah. Now it's now it's like month to month. Yeah. If you put Ray Ray and Bateman in there, you have 7,300 for the last player if you actually wanted to do that. And if you wanted to go down the Patriots D, that gives you 7,600 per player. We could upgrade Madison then to something that sucks less. You could do that. You could go like a David Montgomery or a... Man, I, I wanted to try and get to Camara. It's tough at 7,700. Ray Ray uh, McLeod. Do, uh, Ray Ray McLeod. Who projects the best of just all the players we have left now, Jordan? Bijan. What do you make of Bijan's workload at this point? Lock? I, love I mean, him he's this priced week. down for it at sixty six hundred dollars. It's just been we haven't projected to be massively popular on our first run. I don't think be. that's going to be the case. I think people are going to be scared off by the recent workload. I think it's a good buy low spot for Bijan, but I would be lying if I said that I was confident that he's just going to get the the lion share of the workload. I, I, I'm not confident, but it's very difficult to get away from him this week. Take uh, Madison out, Jordan, and put in Bijan Robinson, and then we'll see who we have. That gives us 6K. Yeah. Probably George Pickens being the guy there. If you wanted to run back with Jamison Williams, you could as well at 5,800. Who's projecting the best there, Jordan? <laughs> it's Najee Harris. If you took the defense, replaced it with Patriots, that gives us 6,300. You could get Chuba against Atlanta. You could get Pittman. You could get Dobbins. You Let's could get it. Dobbins there. That's interesting. That lineup doesn't look horrible if one of Bateman or McLeod has a decent game. Prescott, Pollard, Robert, Bijan, CeeDee Lamb, Bateman, McLeod, Ferguson, Dobbins, Patriots, Dave. Would you rather go uh, – I'd actually rather go Chuba, but, I mean, that we could go either go way. Go for there. it. Go for it. Go, go ahead. Throw Chuba in there. I bet this lineup looks really good if you have Patriots defense and Chuba Hubbard in there. Yeah, I, I bet this is a positive lineup. We shall see. Yeah, Deuce Trey, Bijan sharing carries with his backup running back. I mean, it's not even been like a backup to this point. It's just been 1A, 1B. Mm -hmm. Great lineup. Yeah, you guys will see. That's the that's the, uh, the the new marking that you'll see here on screen. If you build a lineup that sims out, not just based on what the ROI is, but based on like all the available other lineups on the slate and uh, kind of like the moving scale of what ROI could look like on a week to week basis. Uh, you'll see right here, it says great lineup. So now if you build a lineup and it is actually really good for the slate, you you'll see great lineup will show up on screen as well.